Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS Battle Horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 10. In this tutorial we're going to texture our ammo crate and we're also going to make it drop randomly from the sky like an ammo drop. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So since the last tutorial, I have just decreased the size of my ammo crate just a little bit and um, realistically it it's still functions the exact same. So what we're going to do is firstly we are going to texture this so it actually looks more like a crate rather than just a cube. And I'm going to go to my textures folder and I'm going to bring in this texture which you can get on my website if you head over there, download an asset, go to the FPS Battle Horde game, download it there. So I'm going to quickly create a normal map for this, much in the same way we did for the others quite a few tutorials ago. And yeah, realistically, all we're going to do is hide the actual mesh for our collection object and texture the object beneath it, which is the ammo crate. So there's a nice little normal map. I'm going to apply this texture to ammo crate not ammo collect, ammo crate. And let's quickly apply the normal map as well. Next thing to do is let's go to ammo collect and let's untick mesh renderer. And there we go. It's starting to look more like an actual crate rather than a cube. And at this point, it's up to you how much you want to customize how your crate looks. You can make it look cool, you can make it look gritty, dirty, you know, it's it's entirely up to you. It's your game at the end of the day. I will have mine about that. So let's make sure this looks okay. There's our ammo. We've collected it, we've got 10 ammo. So next thing we need to do is apply some physics to this so it drops out of the sky. So let's make sure we're still on ammo crate. And let's close up our material component and then click on add component. Uh, let's go to physics and click on rigid body. What this will do is it will apply a little bit of physics to this, mainly the gravity one that we're interested in. And it will basically act as though it was falling. So if we were to bring this object up into the sky and press play, we'd see there we are falls, lands on the ground. Awesome. And it's at this point that you can probably see that this ammo collection object can be as large or as small as you want. So if you are still having trouble collecting this ammo, um, for example, the collider's not quite getting through, then all you would need to do is just increase that scale size. So let's say uh, 1.4, maybe 1.4, 1.4 because no matter what only the player can still collect this but it still looks relatively normal when it drops out of the sky. So that's all good and well but what does it look like if multiple ammo drops were to fall in the same rough place? Well if we duplicate it and bring it up a little bit uh, let's bring it down and across here a little bit and one maybe there and press play we can see all of these will fall to the ground and tumble across each other. So you can see physics, at least in its simplest form, actually taking effect here. And we just collected all of those and you can see that our ammo is now 40. So we've got that principle down. I'm going to get rid of the others, but I'm thinking I want to increase the size a little bit of our ammo crate. Let's have it as 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. .5. Okay. Next thing we need to do is let's create a script which will allow us to drop this object randomly within this area. Now, although the area is massive and I don't want to go hunting around this entire terrain just trying to find one crate, I'm actually going to make it rather limited where it will drop. Best way to get around this is if we find the maximum position we want our ammo to drop at. So let's say 150. And let's find the furthest position on the X that we are comfortable with it currently dropping at. So let's say um, over here. So that's going to be, let's say 630. 
and on the Z, we'll have as 420. So these initial numbers are something which are going to be very useful to us. So what I usually do when I'm creating something like this is make a quick note of some of these numbers. Now the Y is always going to be the same, but it's the X and the Z coordinates that are going to change. So we need to think that we need probably 50 on each, I would say. So if we say 630 by 150 by 420, that means that is the minimum position that anything can spawn from. So if we move our X to say six, we'll say 660, and we'll do the Z to, let's say 470. So that is the maximum of where they can spawn. So again, probably best to write that down, uh, 470 for me. Yours may be different depending on what you're doing here. So we can now create a script to randomize where this ammo will drop by a script and it will be random each and every time. So to do that, let's go to scripts and let's go to our weapons. And if you remember, we don't actually have anything on the ammo crate. It's only on the ammo collect. So we need to create a separate script for this. So right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this random drop. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So this is going to work very simply just by randomly generating an X position and a Z position. You can do it on the Y if you want to. You don't have to keep it static at 150 like I do. It's entirely up to you. The same principle will apply. So we need to have the X position. So we're going to say public int X, pause, public int Z or Z pause. And we also need to think about how this is going to work. So ultimately what's going to happen here is we are going to move whatever crate, uh, whatever position this crate generates. So let's find the crate itself. It's currently up here. So it means that in start, we now need to generate those two random numbers. So we'll say x pos equals random dot range. And in brackets, that range you wanted to drop in. So remember, for me, the minimum was 630, the maximum was 660. I know that's a very small range for it to drop in. Obviously, when we're happy to go across the entire map, that's when you would increase the scale there. So for now, for testing purposes, we want 630 and 660. So minimum, maximum. Next, we'll do it for the Z position. So Z pos equals random dot range. Minimum for me was 420. Maximum, 470. Close bracket, semicolon. And next, we need to set this position. So transform dot position and in brackets oh no sorry equals new vector three and then we state the position so that's going to be x pos comma 150 comma and z pos close bracket semicolon so let's also get rid of the annotations there and let's get rid of void update because we don't need it. And let's save our script. So essentially what's happening here is when the script starts, it will move this object, whatever it's attached to, to the randomized position on X and Z. So this could randomize as 649. This could randomize as 430. So it will drop this object into that position and everything will carry on as normal. So let's give this a try. So it's just compiling the script. Let's drag and drop this random drop script onto ammo crate. And now let's press play. And hopefully we should see over here the coordinates it's changed to. So 640 and 441. 
it's randomized right there next to us. So let's try that again. And it's randomized over there behind the tree. Cool. So this will work multiple times over. So for example, if I was to duplicate this object, bring it over here, bring it over here, and just do many, many, many of them. It's, you know, just for testing purposes, you can see what kind of effect that this will end up having. So what should happen now is we will have all of these ammo crates drop in a random positions. Cool. There they all are. So, I'm happy now that we have established just how random these can drop. And it's entirely up to you, like I say, how far you want to go with all of this. How much of the map you want this to cover. Now, what I would like to do in the next tutorial is let's have uh, some sound effects when we pick up the crate. Um, we'll also create a way that it randomly drops ammo every 20, 30, 40, 60 seconds or something. So we've always got some ammo drops somewhere. So we'll make sure that that's a constant running thing. And I'm thinking we'll probably start adding in a little bit more UI to say that some ammo is dropping. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.